It is my great pleasure to get to talk to Suda51 of Grasshopper Manufacturer about his newest game, Killer Is Dead. Um, I never sound good describing the stories of your game, so if you would just kind of describe who Mondo Zappa is and why there is so much blood. So Mondo's a, he's an executioner. Uh, basically, he belongs to this agency that's government funded. Uh, it's a government agency, and they don't talk on, take on the regular terrorists, but more of these underworld terrorists that have a, a special abilities. And he is one of the executioner that's hired as a gu hired gun that goes on to take on those task or missions. Special abilities is something of an understatement. Uh, Victor, in, the, in in the boss battle we saw. Um, I mean, he really seems more like a monster. I mean, are, 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 you, are, 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 are these actual people or are these more like creatures or demons? So they are uh, humans, but um, on the dark side of the moon, there are these um, creatures or living forces called the wires, and they start to like, uh, have an effect to the earth. And whenever they um, latch on to people, they start to transform them into a different looks. So that's why when you cut them, you can actually see blood come out because they used to be human, or they are human, I guess. Um, so let's talk about Mondo for a second. Um, if you contrast him with some of the other male characters, or even you know the Lollipop Chainsaw main character, they all seem to be social outcasts, and he seems to be very good at what he does, and maybe respected even. So as you mentioned, um, so his occupation is to execute people. So he is horned in a skill of, um, he's a master of what he does. But it's more like uh, he's a government official. So he takes on the job as a job. So he has a different mindset than what we, we used to see. So, But I wanted to create a new type of hero that people can enjoy. Um, and it was one of the desires to come up with something new. Um, so he has a sword. And then he also has a bionic arm that's actually a gun that's powered by blood. Am I correct in that? Great. Yes. <laughs> Got it right. <laughs> uh, I don't think that was written in the sheet, but yeah, very good. So um, obviously the, the sword play is kind of, uh, you, you, you once worked with the Wemo, but is, this, is, is, is it button presses or are you using the analog stick to slice your enemies? For this game, it's uh, uh, to hit the button, different type of combination, and have uh, combo attacks. And then the arm, the, the idea that it's powered by blood, does that mean you can only use it when you're causing damage to the enemy with the sword? Is, is it kind of a regulation? It is blood fueled, so depending on how many, how, you need to fuel it by killing the enemy. So because of that, there is that limitation. It's not like uh, a unlimited power source that you can use whenever you want to. And depending on what kind of moves or uh, what kind of combination combos that you do, uh, what kind of um, yeah, moves that you want to execute, uh, it really depends on that. So just to give a glimpse of what, what I'm talking about, but there's a different types of way to finish the enemy off. And with that, uh, it, the blood meter comes in play. So um, it, it, I get the sense, though, that when you're not doing a boss battle, that there's a lot of similarities to kind of just cutting through the enemies as you did in No More Heroes. So the style is really close to No More Heroes. So you start the mission and there'll be um, minions or like wires. There's different types of uh, wires, but you go through that through the map, and then at the end you fight the final boss at the stage. And it's and it's structured up like a television series that you're looking at is a whole bunch of episodes strung together. Uh, exactly so. So I had a mind of like having the whole game as one season of um, a story, and um, when I was scripting or when I was drafting the script for it, that's. That's the basic structure that I had in mind. So, um, what's I, probably the most striking thing about the game is how it looks. That it's a visual style that I always associate with you, be it No More Heroes or Killer Seven. But you're able to play with graphical fidelity that I don't think you've gotten to play with before, and it really has a a really cool look. And I was curious if you could talk about the technology and what you're doing this time that you couldn't pull off when you're making games on the Wii. So the, we're using Unreal Engine for it, but the way that we were able to do this, uh, uh, descri not describe, to show this off, I, I don't think a lot of people will say, oh, that's an Unreal Engine, because we did ha have a lot of time into it. But we wanted to come up with some different ways, like not a photographic or not an animated or not tune rendering, tune shading, but a completely different way. And we're calling, a, we're calling it the high contract shader, shader but it's something that um, just by looking at it has this unique look, and sort of this art is like a business business card that just by looking at the art, people can associate it to Killer's Dead and it's something that looks cool. I, I think my final question is, uh, outside of just the visual style, I can just hear what the story is about and go like, okay, that's, 
That's Grasshopper. That's, that's a Suda 51 game. And I didn't know if you like to draw from some type of storytelling or Japanese genre is kind of like where you get some of your mo more very inventive ideas. So, so usually um, when I think about creating a story, I would try to think of something that um, the Japanese, American, and European user all can enjoy. But uh, the, my inspiration comes from like various stuff, my like animes, comic books, novels, movies, but basically all that history put together. Uh, but for this, and a lot of times there's something that I saw when I was a child has a big influence on my story or um, what I come up with. And I think that's just like embedded somewhere in my memory and it just becomes my blood, so it's just all part of me. But if we're talking specifically Killer's Dead, uh, there's a Japanese samurai drama back in the days called Hisatsu Shigoto Ni. It's basically um, the story about these um, regular everyday people, but they actually have a different side. At, at nighttime, they actually they're hired guns to kill people, but nobody no, knows about it. And the main character in that um, uh, series is called Nakamura Mondo. Um, he has a really big impact on me, especially for this one, but it was a complete Japanese setting, but we wanted, I wanted to make that into a more modern, more western theme. So for this title, that had a, a huge effect or impact and uh, uh, inspiration creating this game. We're going to have to go check this out. So Killer is Dead It's coming out this summer for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3. Um, Suda, always a pleasure to see you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much.